good morning. So I'm going to talk today about the sixth paramitar, um, the perfections, the ways um, that bodhisattvas behave and the way that um, comes naturally when we are completely full of compassion and wisdom. So yeah, I've talked about all the others and that was the first one was generosity or dana. The second one was ethics or shila. The third one was kashanti or patience, tolerance. The fourth was energy or virya, perseverance, uh, diligence. And then I talked yesterday about the fifth one, which was meditation. So I'm going to talk today about wisdom. I'm going to talk about it in a couple of different ways, very briefly about the first way, which is, you could say, levels of wisdom, deeper and deeper levels of um, insight. And these are, um, well, they're, they're, they're so extreme and so refined that I'm not going to pretend to know very much about them. So the first one is the emptiness of the conditioned. And that's the main one that we're working on, to see the emptiness of the conditioned. And I've talked about that in many different ways in previous um, videos. And I'll, I'll, I might talk some more about that another time. Then there's emptiness of the unconditioned. Then there's emptiness, great emptiness, which you could say is um, emptiness of any distinction between the conditioned and the unconditioned. So nirvana is right here within samsara, if only we could see it. And then the fourth one is the emptiness of emptiness. So by that time, all concepts are completely meaningless. We don't need any concepts. Concepts, we've gone beyond any concepts whatsoever. So that's a little bit unimaginable, isn't it? So instead, I'm going to talk about aspects of um, wisdom. Uh, using those five Buddhas that we're familiar with in the mandala of the five Buddhas. So, yes, these are different aspects of wisdom all um, com coming together or that came together in the Buddha Shakyamuni. So, after Shakyamuni died, very many years after he died, um, people started contemplating reflecting on, meditating upon different aspects of Buddha qualities, of qualities that the Buddha had. And those were his wisdoms. And so if we, as you know, we usually enter the mandala through the east, eastern gate, and there we find that dark blue Buddha, Akshobhya. And Akshobhya's wisdom is the mirror-like wisdom. So it sees things exactly as they are. And that's just what we don't manage to do. It's a bit like we've got tinted glasses on all the time and we see things through a me perspective and a my perspective. And a mirror sees everything um, just clearly. It reflects everything that goes before it. It doesn't matter if that's something beautiful or something ugly. It makes no difference to the mirror. So that mirror-like wisdom is very clear. It's very complete in itself. It's very uh, direct. It doesn't add anything within the way that we add things. We add all the time to our experience. So then if we move on south, we find Ratnasambhava, the golden Buddha of the south. And his wisdom is the wisdom of equality. So Ratnasambhava sees um, what we have in common with everything else. I mean, at its ultimate, you could say that it sees that everything is empty. Everything is just as it is. It, nothing has any kind of permanence or um, substantiality. So everything is, is the same. And also the love of, um, of Ratnasambhava is the same for um, everybody and everything. There's, there's 
no distinction made. So then we move on into the west. And in the west we find that beautiful dark red, ruby red um, Buddha of the setting sun. And it's interesting, this wisdom, because it seems at first sight to conflict or to be the opposite of Ratnasambhava's wisdom. So we've had the wisdom of sameness and now we have the all discriminating wisdom, all discriminating. So this wisdom sees the uniqueness and the particularity of everything. So we need to be able to see both. It's like when we do the Metta Bhavna, you know, we see that everybody has got their um, unique qualities. Everybody is different and yet underneath, um, we've, we all have the same humanity, we all have the same desire for, for growth. And that goes for all living beings. Um, so every living being wants to be happy. You know, even an ant will try and um, escape from being destroyed, from being killed. So there's sameness and there's also uniqueness. Then we move to the north and we find um, a Moga city, that deep red, deep, sorry, that deep green Buddha, who um, has the wisdom of all accomplishing wisdom all accomplishing. He's a Buddha of action. And in a way, he's a bit like Avalokiteshvara with all his very many thousands of arms in that, you know, nothing is too much trouble. It's like all, everything is accomplished. Everything is accomplishable if only we have the confidence. And of course, um, he's, his mudra represents fearlessness. And if we can face our fearlessness, if we can face our fears and um, experience that fearlessness, um, then we will be able to accomplish absolutely everything and anything. So we need to face all our fears. And then finally, there's this mysterious Buddha in the middle in the middle of the mandala, who represents space. And his name is Varochana. And that means the illuminator, the illuminator. And he, in a way, brings all those other wisdoms together in a wisdom called the Dharmadhatu wisdom. And that is just the wisdom of reality. And reality contains all those other colours and all those other wisdoms. It's like a rainbow, a rainbow of wisdoms that, that is shown through the prisms of the crystal, the, the beautiful crystal of Virochana. So yeah, we can contemplate wisdom in very many different ways. And it's always good though to bring it down to earth and see how wisdom is relevant to our lives right now. And basically, if we can understand, if we can begin to get an understanding of the three Lakshanas, that everything is impermanent, that everything is ultimately unsatisfactory, and if we can see that there is no fixed self, we open up to a very spacious, open, clear wisdom. So that's it for today. Bye-bye.